So we're looking at chapter 16, Romans chapter 16, and it tells us a little bit more about the first century church. I command to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at San Cria, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you, for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. So uh, we spoke last time that Phoebe uh, was a deaconess, a servant of the church. Uh, the word servant is uh, deaconess, you know, she is a uh, deacon. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, over the last 50 years, we have this huge debate whether women can be pastors, right? And we see that women played a very important role in the church. Uh, but they never had this title pastor, this calling pastor. Uh, so, but th we can see a lot of them were deaconesses. Uh, and so, which means they were able to you know, also teach and evangelize. We see that they were very active. So, uh, for example, if you look at all the women mentioned here in this chapter, so it's Phoebe, it's Priscilla, it's Mary, it's Trifina, it's Trifosa, the mother of Rufus, and Julia. Quite a few women are mentioned here. So. And they had different roles. Uh, some of them were rich women, uh, maybe widows. So for example, if you think about, uh, you know, fast forward uh, several centuries and you see uh, Euronymus or Geron Jerome, who translated the Bible into Latin, you know, the Vulgate, you know. And his translation was sponsored by a rich uh, widow. So she paid for that. She paid for his expenses and living expenses. So we see that Paul says that she was a patron uh, or she, she was she was a patron of many and of myself as well. Uh, so, again, the fact that somebody would allow the church to meet at their house uh, doesn't mean that they automatically are pastors. For example, if we are having Bible study at somebody's house, that doesn't mean that that person is automatically a pastor of the church, right? So it just means that they're serving with their uh, house or whatever they have, belongings they have. Uh, but it's interesting that at some point, women have been excluded, like, from... Uh, that's also uh, not good, right? So women should be included in various roles in the church. So... Greet Prisca and Aquila, and Aquila is a man, right? So, and Prisca is his wife. My fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risked their neck for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, uh, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. So you know that they met, uh, we read about them in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 2, and verse 18, and verse 26. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pont Pontus, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them. After this, Paul stayed many days longer, and then took leave of the brothers, and set sail for Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila uh, at century, he had cut his hair, for he was under a vow. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And this is Apollos. So this is another guy. So we can see that they were kind of helping Paul at different, in different cities because he met them in Corinth in chapter 18, 
verse 2 it's Corinth, it's a city in Greece, and then Antioch, and this is already Syria, and then Ephesus, this is Asia Minor. So Paul is moving around and they are with him. And we also know that they are tent makers, right? So they were making tent, tents. I don't know who is a tent maker. So you probably, Randy, are closest to tent making. You're house making, <laughs> house maker. So it's basically uh, they all are Jews. That's very interesting. They believed in Jesus. So it tells you about the nature of, of the early church, right? So you have Jews. But we, but Jews who have Latin names, Priscilla and Aquila, they are Latin names. Jews, but Latin names. So and then, yeah. So they followed him, and he says they risked their necks for my life. Is it because the nature of their trade was such that they were able to travel and make tents at different places? It was just. Very mobile. Uh, of uh, yes, yeah. First Rome, first Rome. Yeah, the Emperor uh, Claudius he uh, kicked out all the Jews from Rome for some time, so they had to leave. Uh, so, but it's interesting, you know, their mobility. Mm -hmm. They were following Paul. I don't know how young they were. Now, if you want to move around, if we, we, we were to move around Michigan, <laughs> uh, we have different type of jobs, right? <laughs> you cannot do that. <clears throat> Except for Randy. Probably you can build houses yeah. all over the place, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you would be able to travel. To whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Because Corinth is Gentile, Antioch is Gentiles, and Ephesus Gentiles. So, and other places. So they help the Apostle Paul to spread the gospel among the Gentiles. And when churches, it's interesting, we spoke with you last time about the organization of the church. They don't have denominations yet, right? So they do not have hierarchy, they do not have buildings, they do not have... It's basically, hey, they believe in Jesus, yes, I believe in Jesus. Let us get together, read the scriptures, sing songs, they sang, they sang hymns, right, from, from the Psalms. They, they sang Psalms, they didn't have any hymnal book or anything, so... Uh, and that's basically... Let us share with other people that, you know, Jesus is the Messiah. It's very primitive, very simple organization. Uh, uh, I don't know, churches, yes? That's, that's a very, yes. And then you have several churches and all are Christians yeah, uh, still, uh, so there are no other names. Greet also the church in their house. Uh, in their house, because uh, the early church, they met in houses. And we spoke with you about this, whether today, uh, in this very hostile times uh, towards Christians, maybe this is how Christians should <coughs> worship in houses. I mean, if you have a building, you have all kinds of expenses related to the building. This building is not that big and still. You know, it costs money to maintain this building. But there are huge buildings, you know. There are very big churches, you know. And I saw many of them close their doors because they are not able to pay, you know. And then I saw uh, some churches turned into uh, different places, right? So like a uh, bar or something else, restaurant. So, so. House churches give more mobility. And then greet my beloved Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. So when Paul came to Asia, he was the first convert to Christ. So we see his name. Um, so Paul came to Asia. 
he was preaching there, and he, this was the first convert. We don't see his name in other places. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, so another couple, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. So this is another Andronicus and Junia, again, so Latin names, but Jews as well, my kinsmen. So they are his relatives. So my fellow prisoners, they're well known to the apostles and they were in Christ before me. So, which basically means that uh, they're his family members, right? And they were in Christ, they became Christians before Paul became Christian. But they also fellow prisoners. Uh, so, they also suffered for Christ. <clears throat> so, also husband and wife, Andronicus and Junia. And then Mary. Mary uh, and Phoebe, uh, just names. I don't think, I, I mean, just female names. So, there, there is no husband. It's very, very likely that they are widows. It's very possible. So... Greet Ampliates, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet the workers in the Lord, uh, Tryphena and Tryphosa, two ladies. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. What do you think all these phrases, worked hard in the Lord, is approved in Christ, worker in Christ? So, they are all evangelists uh, involved in the mission of the church, like spreading it, supporting financially probably. So maybe visiting Paul when he is in prison, bringing him food or clothes, supporters. Yeah. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Just here a little bit, which means uh, you can imagine. Uh, what does it mean that she was a mother to Paul as well? She took care of him, right? Took care of him. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. So quite a few people, but not that many yet just not very big group of people. And I'm always thinking because uh, Christian churches, are, the number of churches is shrinking in the US, kind of, right? So you, you would think, oh, it's kind of terrible. But if you think about their situation, when most of the population, they were pagans. Uh, and you would see whatever you see today on television, right? So all kind of sexual immorality, on all kind of idolatry, right? So this was their world. And they were just like handful of people who were spreading the gospel, you know? We are like them in a way, right? So it's minority. Faith, all the faithful people, it's a minority. So among these people is one of the guys who probably uh, was the first bishop, not the first, the second bishop of Rome, uh, after Peter, you know. Uh, okay, final instructions and greetings. I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions. Uh, it's so relevant, right, to today who cause divisions, and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. 
And the doctrine that we have been taught is the teaching of Christ, right? And uh, contrary to the doctrine you have been taught, today we have progressive Christians, we have you know, people who call themselves Christians, but come up with all kind of crazy doctrines, which are, have, have nothing to do with Christ, right? So watch out for those. Avoid them, he says, avoid them. For such persons do not serve the Lord Christ, but their own appetites, their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. <laughs> like, yeah, hearts of the naive. Yesterday I watched a sh short uh, uh, kind of poll interviews. They were interviewing people on the streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this question, is it okay for a, an eight-year-old child to change what gender they want to be, what sex they want to be? And a lot of young people, yeah, sure, sure, yes. And the guy who does the interviewing, he says, well, eight? Is it okay? Yeah, sure, why not? Five? Oh, five? Maybe yes, maybe not. And then uh, he was talking to a guy and he says, well, then they cut off his penis and you cannot attach it back. And the guy who was saying, okay, okay, oh, I never thought about this. You know, like, okay, so it's called the naive, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you never thought about this, but you're approving of everything because you want to be progressive, right? You want to be on the right side of history. You want to be cool. So, the naive. Smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. Obedience to, to Jesus, obedience, faithfulness to Jesus. I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent, as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Well, this is very refreshing to know that you know, God can crush Satan, right? Under your feet. It's a good word for uh, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sassy Potter, my kinsmen kinsmen. They all are his kinsmen. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, so you see that Paul was dictating and Tertius was writing. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. So another guy who is host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greets you. So now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, this is the xology. Okay, what do you think about this chapter? As Jeff? Um, compared to like the form letter of today, it seems backwards. Usually you have the greeting at the front of the letter, not at the end. Okay. I mean, it, this seems like the way you should be opening the letter, not closing it. <laughs> That's very interesting. He opens with kind of like general greetings. He opens with Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he, had, he promised beforehand through his prophets. Jesus Christ, to all those, verse 7, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called by to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father. He says to all those in Rome, and a very dear all, right? And then in the end, 
all the personal greetings. The timing when it was written. Yeah, Jesus, I mean, it, it was 20 years ago, you know, 25 years ago when Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. 25 years ago, Kirk, <laughs> do you remember what was happening 25 years ago? It's a long time ago, at the same time, not too long. Correct. Huh? There's things that I can still remember. <laughs> you still can remember. <laughs> <laughs> and probably would have remembered uh, Christ being crucified. And That's right. Up that. So let us pray. <laughs> Dear Jesus, we are so thankful for all the workers in Christ. We are so thankful for all the laborers in Christ. We are thankful for Paul and all the other people listed here, for all men and women who are faithful to you, who were faithful to you who are faithful to you today. We know, Jesus, that you call all people to yourself. You sustain them. You support. You move. This is your church. Please, we want to be part of this, of your church, of your plan. Use us as you wish. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.